welcome to Physical Sciences. My name is Temba Ngube. Today in our session, we shall be looking at exploring some of the electrostatics experiment behind the idea of, uh, you know, trying to predict what happens when you bring two materials uh, together and separating them with an intention to, you know, to explore the principle of conservation of charge as well as uh, why do we say that charge is actually uh, quantized. So as a result of that, we, we, we will look at, you know, using some demonstrations uh, which is um, based on conservation of charge, okay? Remember, when we say something is conserved, it means that it must remain constant. So this something is actually a physical quantity. It must remain constant, okay? We shall uh, look into um, what, what, what are the conditions for charge to remain constant, okay? But this is not exactly far removed from the fact that it has, it deals a lot with uh, why, what we mean when we say charge is quantized. This has to do with uh, determining the magnitude of charge, okay? It has to do with determining the magnitude of charge, right? So these are the two uh, uh, main concepts, um, the determining the magnitude, okay? Magnitude, which is the size, okay? Okay, so the word magnitude will be alternatively substituted with the term size. It means one and the same thing, right? Okay, now in an experiment, remember, uh, the idea is to verify an existing or a non-scientific fact and maybe get some sense in, in terms of facts to say, okay, can we, what kind of conclusions can we draw? But uh, we shall use this in the form of predictions and you know, uh, do some activities around uh, the transfer of charge between two materials, right? So it says here, two oppositely charged polystyrene spheres. Now these polystyrene spheres are your typical materials that could be th thought of as, you know, um, you know, insulators, okay? They are suspended on a thin thread, okay? Predict what happens to the spheres. So we've got two oppositely charged. If it says oppositely charged, it means one may be positive and the other one is negative. So uh, whichever comes first, it doesn't matter in terms of the order, but uh, there are unlike charges. So opposite uh, suggests that the charges are unlike. So unlike, it means positive, negative, or negative, positive, right, okay? And then the key words in terms of language, uh, because when you talk terminology in science, that's a very, very important you know, aspect of science, because science in its own is a language. So the, 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 the words that we use, or the terms, the, the, you know, uh, the terminology that we use in science has, carries, may carry a different meaning in a different context. So it's very, very important to understand the terminology. And in terms of definition, remember, uh, the examination guidelines are the, our point of reference to say what is acceptable in terms of definition. Remember, the key words in the definition must also be used in the correct context. What I mean by that is that if you read you know, a definition for argument's sake, it should convey the correct or the intended scientific meaning. Sometimes you may have the correct key words, but if the word, the word order in which you put them or present, then it, it, it leaves us with no scientific meaning. So you need to be very careful about that. So what are some of these terms that are important for the purpose of today's discussion in as far as you know, a quantization of charge as well as uh, um, conservation of charge, right? Uh, the, the first term is isolated system, okay? So an isolated system is, you know, whatever will be given or described, we'll think of it in terms of the net charge in this context to say if uh, a system is isolated, what we have at the beginning is, what we, is actually what we must retain at the end. So it, there is no external interference, you know, from others. So the only two materials that carry uh, the charge there are the polystyrene, uh, are those insulators. So the insulators, okay, or the materials, okay, given um, in the scenario, okay, are the only ones, are the only objects, okay, are the only objects that carry charge, okay? 
So uh, we, we're trying to break this down with, in, 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 in terms of you know, the context. So the isolated system, the only charge is what we've been given. So there won't be charge going out of that system or charge coming into the system. Hence, we'll say that the net charge will remain constant. And when we talk about net charge, we're talking about the total charge in that system, okay? So we talk about the total charge. Now, the two key concepts, again, is around the law of conservation of charge. What does the law of conservation of charge say? It says that in an isolated system, okay? So in an isolated system, Okay. The net charge, the net charge remains constant. Okay. So the net charge or the total charge remains constant. Okay. And this is only possible uh, during a physical process. Okay. So this is during a physical process. Okay. So what do we mean by a physical process? Remember, uh, the prediction that we say is when we say two materials that are charged, they are brought into contact. The, them coming together or in contact, that's a physical process. So under what conditions does the total charge remain constant? It should be in a closed system or in an isolated system. So this is the term that describes the condition under which charge can only remain constant. And then when we talk about the principle of quantization of charge, we're talking about the fact that the quantity of charge, you know, that exists in the universe is actually a scalar multiple of the, char of the elementary charge, in which we summarized in terms of Q is equals to NQE, right? So this is the mathematical representation, but remember, when you define, you define in words. So it says here, the, the every charge in the universe, okay? So this is the, 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 the principle of quantization of charge. It says every charge okay, in the universe, okay? So any charge that exists, any non-charge, that's what uh, we, we, we are talking about, okay? So in the universe, right, is a scalar multiple or is an integer multiple, right? Appropriately, it's an integer because it's a whole number, okay? It's an integer multiple of the elementary charge, okay? So the elementary charge is actually the charge of a single electron, okay? That's, that's what we would refer to as the elementary charge, which is a constant. Now, that value does not change. We are saying that QE is equal to negative 1, 6 multiplied by 10 exponent negative 19 Coulombs. Remember, once more, this value is a physical constant. It shall be given to you. You need not uh, memorize it. And this minus is about the first minus, this one which goes with negative 1, 6. Uh, it's actually the, the nature of the charge, which is negative, while this other one which goes with the exponent is for the decimal fraction. So you must be able to distinguish between the two, right? Okay, so the smallest possible charge, as far as quantization of charge, uh, carries that value. We have uh, spoke about that briefly. What does that say to us? It says the corresponding positive charge of the proton. Okay, so the proton is positive. Okay, uh, it's actually positive one comma six times ten exponent negative nineteen, which brings us to something very very important in as far as quantization of charge. Now, for a material to have a charge of one coulomb as a unit charge. We know that Q is equals to NQE, right? Now, for a material to have a charge of one coulomb, so the charge is one coulomb, right? How many electrons would have been removed from it? It's equals to a uh, number of electrons, that's, that's what we want, okay? So if we remove the electrons, then it means uh, it's gonna be positive 1,6 times 10 because that's the charge of a single uh, proton, right? So if uh, the, 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 the material is positively charged, it has to do with the pro number of e electrons removed. So N is actual actually equals to 1 divided by 1, 6 times 10 
negative 19. Okay, so n is equals to, let's go to our calculator. There's some thinking that I want us to get around the principle of quantization of charge, right? Okay, right. So on our calculator, what do we have? We've got, um, okay, we put the fraction there because that's what it is. One divided by 1 comma 6 multiplied by 10 exponent negative 19, right? So that's our value. So for a material to have a charge of one coulomb, this is the number of electrons that need to be removed, which is 6,25 times 10 exponent 18, right? Okay, that's 6,25 times 10 exponent 18 electrons, okay? Right. This is, this is what uh, we mean when we say uh, for us to change a, a, you know, a neutral material from charge, a net charge of zero to a unit charge, which is uh, uh, one coulomb. This is actually the number of electrons that need to be removed from it, right? So e equally so, we can also think in terms of the number of electrons that have to be added, you know, for it to have a charge of one coulomb would add the same number of electrons because when you add, the material acquires a negative charge, but when you remove, the material acquires a positive charge, right? Moving along, um, so we're still looking at quantization. It says here an object that is a charge of negative one coulomb contains this number of electrons in excess. Now this number looks familiar, okay? So to get a charge of one coulomb, all right, a negative one coulomb, we are saying we must add a certain number of electrons based on the principle of quantization of charge. So for us to get one coulomb, actually we must say 6,25 electrons added, okay? 6,25 times 10 exponent 18 electrons. We multiply this by the elementary charge, negative one. Why are we saying negative in this case? It's because we are adding and the, the, the charge that uh, uh, will, will arise is a negative as we discussed this earlier in the origin of charge. So that's one comma six multiplied by 10 exponent negative uh, 19, okay? Negative 19, that's the elementary charge. So Q in this case will obviously work out to uh, negative one coulomb, okay? It will work out to negative one coulomb. So for us to get a, ch a charge of negative one coulomb, we actually have to remove, to add rather, this number of electrons. So let's understand, you know, um, the, the quantization of charge in, in that way, right? Okay, and then um, the, there are different units uh, of measuring charge, you know, uh, but the SI unit is actually the coulomb, okay? So we've got millicoulombs, we also have microcoulombs, nanocoulombs, and picocoulombs. Now of these, that, that are listed, which are the most common ones. The smallest of them all is a picocoulomb because we are dividing by 10 exponent 12, okay, which is a very big number. While a millicoulomb, we're actually dividing by a thousand. In other words, to move from millicoulomb to coulombs, what do we do? We divide by a thousand, okay? So if we divide by a thousand, it's, it's as good as multiplying by 10 exponent negative three, which explains that part of our conversion. So we need to uh, carry out these necessary conversions as and when it's necessary, okay? So there are different things that you can, uh, uh, values that you can, or SI units that can be given, like for argument's sake, uh, this is negative four microcoulombs, this is equal to, okay, negative four multiplied by 10 exponent negative six coulomb, okay, right? And then if we have got positive 15 nano, okay, uh, it says 15 times 10 exponent negative nine coulomb, okay? So these are the different units. And then um, also um, you, you'd understand that the, the, the micro are, because we are saying that a one micro coulomb, right, is equals to one times 10 exponent negative six coulomb, while one nano coulomb is equals to one times 10 exponent negative nine coulombs. So this uh, reduces to 15 
multiplied by 10 exponent negative 9 coulombs. So the conversion is from nanocoulombs to coulombs, while on the other hand, negative 4 times 10 exponent negative 6 coulombs. So the conversion is from microcoulombs to coulombs, which is the SI unit. Having said that, we shall explore you know, a, a number of scenarios which involve quantization as well as conservation of charge. For now, let's take a short break. Welcome back to our second segment. We're still talking conservation of charge as well as quantization of charge. Yeah, as far as the two, you know, concepts in, you know, interaction of uh, charges, we are using insulators. They come into contact. We separate them, and we want to predict. Uh, it could be in the form, you know, of, of a positive and a negative, a positive and a neutral, you know, we'll try and explore uh, different, you know, uh, possibilities in as far as, you know, the, 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 the far-reaching implication of, you know, uh, uh, the principle of conservation of charge. So we're still talking conservation of charge, which cannot be separated from the fact that uh, charge is actually quantized, right? So meaning that when charge is quantized, we're saying that uh, we want to determine the magnitude of charge. So that's the, that's that's the basic, you know, um, idea. So we've got two oppositely charged. We've mentioned that um, these oppositely charged insulators, okay, one is positive and one is negative. And then the thin, thin strand does not allow the charge to, to be transferred, you know, outside. So the total charge is actually between these two uh, oppositely charged polystyrene spheres. Now, uh, in terms of prediction, we want to understand the science as to what exactly happens in terms of charge during that physical process. Right. Now, these two charged objects are attracted to each other. Okay. Uh, let's, let's call this one Q1 for argument's sake. Okay. And then just call the negative one Q2 uh, as in charge one and charge two respectively. So we want to understand what happens here. But remember, we know that opposite or unlike charges attract, okay? Opposite or unlike charges exert a force of attraction on each other, ne? They attract each other, okay? So in other words, there is a force uh, exerted by Q1 on Q2 towards Q1. And then there is a force exerted by Q1 on Q2 um, in, in, in the opposite direction, but what, what is essential here is that they tend to pull together. Remember, a force is a push or a pull. So actually, the force on, uh, actually on, on, on Q1 is by Q2 towards Q2 because it's an attractive force. So we, we know that one thing for sure, because these are charged materials, they exert a force of attraction on each other. So there is attraction there between the two. Okay, it goes without saying. And then if we bring them together on contact, and then this contact is what we would refer to as a physical process, okay? So this is a physical process. So during contact, remember, the, 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 the Q2 is negatively charged, while Q1 is positively charged, okay? So Q1 is positive. Now, now, there is a transfer of electrons between these two. Now, these electrons are moved from uh, uh, um, Q2 to Q1. Why? Uh, because Q2 has excess electrons, okay? Q2 has excess electrons, okay? Uh, while Q1 has excess protons, okay? as excess protons, which, which explains why Q1 has got a positive charge, right? And uh, Q2 has got negative charge. So the transfer is actually uh, with respect to electrons, all right? Now, uh, as they transfer this charge, the charge is shared equally. So if we go back again, uh, we know that the other one is four plus four microcoulombs, while the other one is negative 10 microcoulombs. So the net charge in this case, in this uh, closed system, Q net is equals to Q1 plus Q2, right? So 
the net charge in this case becomes, because the other one is plus four and then minus 10, it means this is equals to uh, negative six micro coulombs. So this is the total charge in this system. So before they were brought into contact and after they were brought into contact, the net charge must remain the same, all right? Okay, so if the net charge remains the same, uh, after making contact, they've shared this excess charge equally. So uh, after making contact or during that process of, 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 of coming into contact, they actually share charge equally, okay? Charge is shared equally, okay? Let's, let's highlight that because it's, it's very important. So charge is shared equally. Now we, we, we're talking about excess electrons in this case. They are shared equally. Now, if you, 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 you come to think of it, the, the new charge on Q1 is now negative three microcoulombs, while the new charge after contact on Q2 is also negative three. So now they are, these two materials uh, have got uh, identically charged. They're identical in every sense of the word in terms of the quantity of charge that each one of them carries. But now there is a, because now they are equal in terms of charge, now they are identical, they are like charges. We know that like charges exert a force of what? Of repulsion on each other, okay? Like charges repel each other, okay? So this is what is happening now because both of them now are negatively charged, okay? But again, to, to, to show you something again that is very important, Q net is still equals to Q1 plus Q2, which means it's negative three plus negative three, okay? Which is still negative six micro coulombs. So our net charge before and after contact has remained unchanged. Hence we talk the, the, the term conservation, all right? Okay, now we also want to understand something, okay? Which is very uh, important, okay? In terms of the number of electrons that were transferred, right? So we know the principle of quantization of charge it says Q is equal to number of electrons lost or gained, okay, multiplied by the elementary charge. And remember, the elementary charge is a constant. It's negative 1,6 multiplied by 10 exponent negative 19 coulombs, all right? So uh, there was transfer of charge from Q2 to Q1, right? Now, uh, the new charge in each one of them, which is identical, or which is also equal, is negative three times 10 exponent negative six coulomb, okay? Uh, we've already carried out the conversion there, all right? So if we talk about the net charge, uh, we're talking about the sum of the negative three microcoulombs for Q1 and Q2. So the number of electrons transferred um, if we can make uh, that in the subject, it's gonna be the change in charge. Let's take, for example, Q1, Q1 divided by the elementary charge, okay? The change is final minus initial. The final charge for Q1 is negative three times 10 exponent negative six, okay? Minus the initial charge of Q1, which was plus four microcoulombs, which is four times 10 exponent negative six uh, coulombs, okay? We divide this by the elementary charge, which is negative. Why are we using negative? Because Q1 gained electrons. It became more negative. In other words, it became less positive. So which is negative 1,6 times 10 exponent negative 19, right? So we can actually get the number of electrons that were transferred between those two, right? So the number of electrons transferred, we can go back to our calculator, clear that, right? It's negative three, okay, times 10 exponent negative six minus uh, four times 10 exponent negative six. We divide that by the elementary charge, which is negative, okay? Because Q1 gained times 10 exponent minus 19. So this will give us an indication of the number of electrons that were actually transferred, 4,375. 4,375 times 10 exponent, 13, okay? 4,375 times 10 exponent, 13 electrons. 
So if this is the number of electrons that were lost by Q2, this is actually the number of electrons that were gained by Q1, which is actually the number of electrons that were transferred. Right, okay, we're still looking at that. Now, we have got two oppositely charged. Uh, we're still talking about the same experiment, okay, uh, which says to us, okay, the first or the new charge on the spheres, we've managed to determine the new charge, and we've said that Q nu is actually equals to Q net, okay, divided by two, all right. So this is actually the, the new charge which is based on the, the net, uh, of which the net we agree that it's negative six microcoulombs, right, divided by two because charge is shared equally. This gives us negative three uh, times 10 exponent negative six coulombs, which is like, in other words, negative three micro coulombs, right? This is the new charge each one of them will have after uh, separation, right? Okay, now we've managed to do that, okay? Now, uh, we've got a different scenario altogether, okay? Just to go once more over the steps that we took in terms of predicting what happens. So we've got two insulators, they carry whatever charge, uh, be it like charges or opposite charges. If you bring them into contact, the net charge remains the same even before actually bringing them into contact because that's what the principle of conservation of, or sorry, conservation of charge says, that the net charge must remain the same during a physical process. So the physical process involves bringing these two together and separating them. And while these two are in contact, charge will be equally distributed between the two insulators. As a result of that, uh, we, get, we get new charge, which is the same for QA and QB, or Q1 and Q2. And then we are able to say, whatever the number of electrons that were actually lost by the one that has got excess is equal to the number of electrons gained by that material that has got excess proton that is more positive, in other words, which is also equal to the number of electrons transferred. That's the, the, the main idea around this, right? And also, here we've got a different scenario. Now, these are like, already, let's call this one QA, right? Uh, negative six nanocoulombs, let's call this one QB, right? Now, already, these two are, 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 are what you call uh, like charges. Actually, the forces must actually be away from each other. They are repelling each other, okay? Uh, not exactly attracting. So uh, let's, uh, let's just correct that, okay? So there's a force, but these arrows, they're saying that we put them together uh, so that they make contact. So these arrows are actually saying they must put them, they, they must come into contact. But we know before they make contact, they tend themselves to repel each other because these are like charges, right? So these are like charges. So they, 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 they the, the white arrows, they suggest that they are brought into contact, but before they are brought into contact, they're actually pushing each other away, all right? And then after separation, this is what happens, okay? Now, we have got a scenario whereby it's negative four, uh, negative six nanocoulombs and negative two. So if that's the case, our Q net in this case is actually equal to uh, negative eight nanocoulombs. Okay, so the new charge on each one of them, Q nu is equals to um, Q net, which is the total, divided by two. Then this gives us negative eight nanocoulombs divided by two, which gives us the negative four nanocoulombs that we see. So each one of them now carries a charge of uh, uh, negative four nanocoulombs, but still the force of repulsion still exists because they are still, in this case, essentially like charges. Okay, we'll take the discussion further uh, after the short break just to try and interrogate as to how many electrons were lost, which one lost and which one is gaining, and how many electrons were effectively uh, transferred between the two. So we shall take that discussion further after the short break. Let's take a breather for now.
welcome back to our final segment. We're still discussing, you know, uh, the conservation of charge, as well as the fact that, uh, you know, once charge remains constant and two materials are involved, there is the transfer. And the transfer actually speaks to uh, the quantization of charge, which has a lot to do with the number of electrons either lost, gained, uh, which effectively talks to the number of electrons transferred between two materials during a physical process, which is the contact, right? Now, we're still talking uh, about this scenario that after separation, they retain the same amount of charge. And you'd realize that the force that acts on, uh, we say this one is QA, and then this one is QB. The force exerted by QA on QB is away from it. Why is it so? Because these are actually like charges. Okay, so the idea of the force uh, uh, as a vector is very important because uh, we know that charged particles or charged materials, they exert a non-contact or a field force on each other and the force could be in the form of attraction or repulsion. Now let's shift gears a little bit and look at a different uh, uh, scenario altogether. And you'd also realize that the units, they keep changing. But in this scenario, uh, uh, based on our prediction, something's gonna be a little bit different because we want to predict once again uh, what would happen if a charged a, a object is brought into contact. So we can't talk polarization here because there is contact. So transfer of charge will actually take place. But this other one is, is neutral. So let's call this one, let's, let's, let's label this one Q1 and this one Q2. So what's the difference between Q1 and Q2? Q1 is negatively charged. It has got excess electrons, okay? Why? Because it's negatively charged. Then uh, Q2 is neutral. It has got a zero net charge. What does it mean? It means the number of electrons on uh, 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 sphere Q2 is equal to the number of protons, hence the net charge is zero, but it doesn't certainly uh, you know, necessarily mean that uh, it, it does not have charges. The net charge on Q2 is zero. So there are no excess electrons, no excess protons. Why? Because the number of protons equals the number of electrons. Okay, that's the main thing, right? Of protons is equal to the number of electrons. Okay, that's the main thing around a, 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 a neutral material, and it speaks a lot about, uh, um, you know, the origin of charge, as we we had in our earlier discussions. Okay, so here the net charge uh, is definitely going to be. Uh, Q net, okay, just to put it out there, is equals to Q1 plus Q2, right? So Q1 is negative nine millicoulombs plus zero. This gives us what? Negative nine millicoulombs. So that's our Q net, right? So as long as this is a closed system, the net charge is not going to change before or after the physical process has taken place, right? And then uh, after separation, this is what we have, okay? Now, remember, the moment they start to share charge, uh, one that is, has got excess electrons, if you can quickly go back to that, you see this one has got excess electrons, Q1, okay? So that's why uh, electrons are transferred from Q1 to Q2 during that physical process. Now. We are saying that uh, now that they are identical or now they've got, they are like charges, they would exert a repulsive non-contact force uh, on each other, okay? But still, we maintain that Q net is equals to, um, okay, that's still our Q1, and then that's our Q2. Our Q net is negative 4,5 plus, okay? Negative 4,5, okay? It takes us back again to negative nine nano, uh, millicoulombs, okay? So that's our Q net. So our Q net has not changed, okay? Right, so it means the principle of conservation of charge is still valid or it still holds in this case, right? Now, what are we saying uh, in a nutshell? We're saying that the law of conservation of charge states that the net charge, so the net charge is one of the key terms, okay? It should be in an isolated system remains constant uh, during a physical process. 
okay? So, and we know that for us to obtain, um, you know, uh, the new charge uh, during a physical process, uh, which is the same, this is the same as saying Q net uh, divided by two, okay? Because Q net is the sum of the two charges that are interacting. So this is the, actually the main idea in as far as, uh, you know, conservation of charge, all right? Okay, we understand that. Now let's look at a typical problem and uh, discuss, you know, the approach around it and how exactly we apply the principle or the law of conservation of charge as well as quantization of the charge because we've put it out there that the two are actually uh, cannot be separated, okay? It says two spheres touch. That's a physical process, there is contact. So once they touch, we are saying there is what? There is contact between them. And immediately we talk uh, about contact or spheres, whether charged or not, we can talk about the transfer of charge, right? Now, which is the electrons. So the one charge is plus four microcoulomb, and the other one is negative 10 microcoulombs. They are separated on the charge, on each sphere is, is negative three microcoulombs, okay? Determine the size of charge transferred. Determine the size of charge that is transferred. We want the number of electrons or the, the, the amount of charge that is transferred, okay? So we know that the law says Q is equals to N uh, QE, right? So that's the principle, okay? So the change in charge uh, is actually equals to the number of electrons transferred um, multiplied by QE, right? So we can determine the number of electrons because we are able to, to tell, okay, initially it was, uh, one of them was that, okay? If that's our Q1, okay? And then maybe this one is our Q2. And then this is the Q nu on each one of them. Uh, this is after separation. So what are we saying here? We are saying that um, the number of electrons that, uh, which is the actual charge transferred, that's the charge that's transferred, is equal to delta Q over the elementary charge. Now, let's, let's use for argument's sake Q2, okay? Finally, Q2 uh, is negative three, okay? Times 10 exponent negative six, okay? This is the final because change is final minus initial, okay? Uh, the initial charge was negative 10, so it's minus negative 10 times 10 exponent negative six, okay? We divide this by the elementary charge, which is uh, because Q2 is, has got excess electrons, it's the one that loses, so it becomes less negative or more positive. Hence, we'll ignore the negative in the elementary charge uh, uh, value and put 1,6 times 10 exponent negative 19, right? So here we are actually going to get a value that is positive because we can have a positive number of electrons. So the number of electrons transferred can be calculated in that way. Uh, let's go to our calculator now, okay? From the calculator, okay, if we clear that, uh, that's a fraction, okay? We are saying negative three, uh, times 10 exponent negative six minus, okay, uh, minus 10, okay, times 10 exponent negative six. We close that and then we divide by one comma six. We ignored the negative because the Q2 is the one that has got excess electrons. In other words, that's the one that loses during the transfer. So this is an exponent negative 19. Okay, what does this give us? We go to our calculator, 4,375. Now that value looks very familiar because it's the same number of electrons that we calculated earlier on uh, in terms of the number of electrons that we gained by Q1. So 4,375, okay? It's 4,375 times 10 exponent 13 electrons that were lost by Q. Uh, uh, two, right? So this is the, the change of, of the, the size of the charge that was transferred between the two, right? Okay, so determining the number of electrons, we, we've done that, it's always about the quantization of charge, which is N is equals to change in charge divided by the elementary charge. So that's the, the big idea uh, in as far as the 
the fact that charge is quantized. So the change in charge of both Q1 and Q2 during the transfer has to do with the number of electrons that were transferred. That's the main, main idea in as far as this problem is concerned, right? Okay. Now, um, in summary, what are we saying? The number of electrons transferred between two objects is based on the law of quantization of charge. So number of electrons, okay, number of electrons lost, okay, is equals to number of electrons, okay, number of electrons gained. Okay, this is also equals to number of electrons transferred, right? So for, for, for the charge to remain constant, the net charge to remain constant, what is lost during the transfer must be equals to what is gained. That's, that's the big idea in as far as uh, this problem is concerned, right? Now, let's look at uh, some of the, you know, real life applications of electrostatics because electrostatics, uh, you know, in a, in a broader sense, deals with forces, deals with charges. Uh, now, what, what is it that we already know? We know that like charges, they tend to repel each other while opposite or unlike charges tend to exert a force of attraction. Now you'd wonder in terms of everyday life application, how does this uh, all come together as far as electrostatics is concerned? We are saying that, take for argument's sake, you know, the photocopier, you know, the ink has to be, or, or during the printing or photocopying, the ink has to stick on the piece of paper. So if the ink is charged opposite to the page, paper, it means that the ink droplets can easily stick onto the paper. So the issue of the, the photocopier uh, it also uh, actually has a lot to do with the application of electrostatics. Also in industry, you think of spray painting. Spray painting, printing, you know, uses the more or less the same idea. You know, the paint droplets are charged opposite to the body of the car. So once it sticks onto the car, it, it, that is made possible due to those non-contact Okay, non-contact electrostatic forces that exist between them before they even come into contact, okay? Non-contact electrostatic force. But in this case, in both cases, it's actually attraction, okay? It's actually attraction. So the paint droplets are actually attracted to the body of the car while again, on the other hand, when you talk about you know those processing industries in on a large scale manufacturing you know uh, industries, you 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 get where you've got smoke coming out of chimneys. So to exclude the smoke, you know, from the plant, they they also charge the smoke in a different you know in an opposite charge to you know the chimney, so that the smoke can actually be uh, taken out of you know the. The, 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 the plant. So when that happens, you are still applying the same principle that opposite charges actually uh, um, uh, they attract each other, okay? While, op while like charges, they repel, okay? So opposite charges, they exert a force of attraction. So that's the main, main idea. Okay, let's go back to our, you know, our big picture to try and bring all these pieces together. Now, our discussion was purely based on, you know, uh, conservation of charge, right? To saying that, to say that the charge, the net charge, as long as it's a closed system, remains constant. It does not change during a physical process. And what is a physical process? Is is this, you know, two materials that are charged, or one is charged, the other one is uncharged, because there's a variation of that uh, bring, coming into contact and being separated, and ultimately each one of them retaining an equal amount of charge. So that conservation of charge, again, speaks to the quantization of charge. So in simple language, if one perhaps is to talk about the fact that wh what do we mean when we say charge is quantized? Remember, for a material to be charged, electrons need to be either removed from it for it to get a positive charge, or electrons need to be added to it to get uh, the, a, a negative charge. So the 
magnitude of the charge entirely depends on the number of electrons that were actually removed from that material or added, okay? So if the, 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 the greater the number of electrons removed from a material, the more positive it becomes, okay? So it has got a greater positive charge than a material which, which has got a, a comparatively lesser number of electrons removed from it. And similarly, if we were to consider a case where electrons were being added to a material so that that material attains or has, uh, you know, achieves a, a, a negative charge, the, the, the magnitude of that negative charge is not the same because it depends on the number of electrons added. So the lesser electrons we add, the less negative it becomes, okay? So if we add a lot of electrons, it has got more electrons ne in excess, then it is even more negatively charged. That's the big idea to, for us to say what it means when we say that charge is actually quantized, right? So uh, we also looked at, you know, uh, the non-contact forces, because where there is charge, there are forces involved. And these forces are either attraction or repulsion. And the materials that are involved, we spoke of conductors and insulators. So uh, this, this, the, 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 this comes, this brings it to all together in terms of what exactly happens when charged materials interact with each other. Having said that, I think we, we, we kind of get the gist of how all these liquid bits, you know, come together to make the big idea of what exactly in, is involved in electrostatics. We, hopefully that makes sense, okay, because we discussed quite a lot of concept. But I think because of time constraints, uh, we shall call it a day for now. I hope it made a lot of sense. But the idea is to bring all these pieces of the puzzle together and create that understanding that is much needed. So for myself, Temba Gnube, is cheers and bye-bye for now.